Hello and welcome back to the channel. You're here with the Lone Wolf once again. I hope you're all doing well. I'd like to say thanks first of all to everybody that has subscribed to the channel over the last few days. I'm really humbled by the fact that everybody wants to join. Hopefully they're finding the messages useful in all of my videos, beneficial for their own personal development and finding some, I guess, use in the reaction videos and other things, the articles that I've been looking at. Today we have an article from Nikkei Asia because as we, many of you will know, Japan has got a lot of social issues that are facing it at the moment in terms of demographics, right? So this piece, and I'll include the link, it's an opinion piece by Nobuko Kobayashi from May of this year. Men must change to reverse Japan's rapidly declining birth rate. At work and at home, it is crucial for men to do their share. Now, Japan is one of those countries where I've wanted to go for a long time. I, I, even as far back as at school, I had a friend at school who was just mad about Japanese culture, uh, anime, video games, manga, all of this stuff. And he actually ended up going out there and he got married to a Japanese woman and had children and things and he actually still lives out there now um, as a, I think he's an English teacher and the culture looks fascinating the, the I've read and seen a few commentators on YouTube that have said that you know women are feminine out there it's a very different and the culture and the society just looks like it's from another planet and it looks really cool and I, I really want to go in the future so maybe I can make that happen. But those of you out there who are familiar with the manosphere and the space will be aware of the herbivore men phenomenon. It's closely related to the men doing their own thing movement, the lone wolf movement. And it's creating a big problem. And we'll see in this article, I'm, I have a feeling where the article is going, right? So I'll, I'll begin. Uh, Nabucco is with EY Strategy and Consulting Limited. Um, okay, at the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, Japan braced itself for the devastation of its elderly population, yet the biggest demographic blow arrived not in the form of more people dying, but fewer people being born. Extrapolating the latest government statistics from January to March, Japan can expect 80,000 fewer babies this year, a 9.2% fall in the birth rate compared to 2020, while COVID-19 has so far claimed the lives of fewer than 13,000 people. Not only is Japan greying rapidly, but its population is also shrinking at an alarming speed. If we believe that a stable and well-balanced population is essential to a nation's sustainability, then we must act fast to counteract this demographic crisis. To put it simply, we need more couples to want to have babies. The only way to move the needle in the right direction is to change the behaviour of men, both at work and at home. Women can help too, by working with men. A low birth rate is not unique to Japan among the world's developed economies. The reasons behind falling birth rates are complex, involving feelings about the future, the desire to couple with a long-term partner, and how much time and money people have at their disposal. The good news for Japan is that there is at least the desire to have more babies. In fact, statistics suggest that Japanese couples are holding back. There could be the desire, but the birth rate doesn't suggest that it's having any translation. The last time the National Institute of Population and Social Security Research asked, back in 2015, the average number of children that Japanese couples said they wanted was 2.32 compared to the actual number of children per couple of 1.94. Closing that gap between how many children couples say they want and how many they are actually having is the key to combating Japan's long-term population decline, which has now been acutely aggravated by the pandemic. After former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's Womenomics policy, which attempted to elevate the status of working women, failed to lift the birth rate. Does encouraging women to focus on building their careers also lead them to delay having babies? The truth is that achieving the twin objectives of achieving professional gender equality and helping couples have the number of children they actually want is not such a difficult problem. To solve it, the one thing we must change is the male mindset. What's, it's always men's fault, right? <laughs> every, every societal problem, it's men's fault. In recent years, governments have largely left it up to women to advance the cause of gender equality, as the name womenomics plainly suggests, but not enough is being asked of men. 
While there are currently twice as many double-income households as there are single-income households, Japanese women spend double the amount spend double the amount of time on housework and childcare as their husbands. At the same time, Japan's culture of overwork at the office has persisted. Well, is it is it not fair if like Japanese women do more of the housework and childcare if their husband's out all day? If you've got this huge problem with overwork and they're barely at home to spend time with their families, they're, you know, slaughtering themselves at work to provide for the family. So is it not fair that he do less housework, less stuff in the household because he's putting bread on the table? That just seems logical to me. While Japanese women have leaned into a world designed by and for men, most men have done little, if anything, to change. Yet the empowerment of women must not rely solely on women, and men, the quiet passengers of womenomics, must change not just for their own good, but for their partners too. Men don't have to change for anyone. Men can do whatever they like. And more and more are realizing that. If you look at the herbivore men, very similar to the lone wolf mindset, where they're just not interested in dating or relationships, they're into uh, you know, going on long walks, traveling, sightseeing, playing video games, getting into comics. They're, they're, you, you can't compel us to do anything. We're taking responsibility for our own lives. We don't care. You know, if it was more attractive to get into relationships and it was worthwhile, the, 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 uh, the benefits outweighed the cost. More people will be doing it. Yet this, this movement continues to grow and, and prosper, even though, you know, you look at the Reddit thread the other day, the Reddit was, was shut down completely. It wasn't just quarantined as it has been for some time. It was completely obliterated and banned. Because it's a threat. It's, it's a threat to population growth and economic prosperity in the future. So, again, they see it as a threat. And all, this is just shaming. Shaming tactics all the time. With the pandemic knocking down so many long-standing Japanese work customs, managers can finally dispense with the needless FaceTime culture instill meritocracy and make the workplace more people-friendly by things such as capping the hours people spend at work without lowering productivity. Take Yoshihisa Aono, the celebrated founder and CEO of cloud service company Sibozu, which turned over 13 billion yen last year, who recently told Nikkei that he routinely takes his three kids to school in the morning and then focuses on work until 6.30 p.m. sharp. Evenings are reserved for family. They were there the CEO, they can do what they like. <laughs> <laughs> they're not on the 9 to 5 or the 9 to 9 you know it's not like the lower levels he's a CEO who's going to tell him what to do when they get home Japanese men tend to need to lean in for a change and start performing more tasks traditionally dismissed as women's work while governments deserve credit for helping to destigmatize depression and contributing to a reversal of the self cancellation rate from 2010 to 2019 other others campaign other campaigns like the premium friday campaign encouraging workers to take off early on the fourth friday each of each of month yeah sorry the grammar here is appalling have flopped badly a campaign encouraging husbands and fathers to chip in more for housework and childcare would surely win the support of women the end goal is not to reverse the clock on gender equality but enable japanese women to have more fulfilling careers and family lives, and that includes having babies before it is too late, without sacrificing your career. This will happen only if men are willing to change. So they want to have it all, and it's, it's men's fault that they can't have it all. There's clearly two different directions you can go in, really. You can either focus on the family and do it correctly, or you can focus on your career. I mean, call me out if you think I'm wrong. Like, There's very few people who can adequately manage and excel in both of those things at the same time because they're completely different skill sets and there's completely different demands and here we have some data okay the number of births in japan in millions look at that graph it's uh <laughs> peaked in 1973 2.1 million and we're currently on what forecasted for 782,000. Okay, so that's devastatingly low. COVID's biggest impact on Japan so far is that compared with the pre-pandemic forecast, it has drastically accelerated the declining birth rate. The 780,000 children expected to be born this year in Japan is equivalent to the pre-COVID estimates predicted 
for the year 2035, forwarding the clock to Japan becoming a childless dystopia. A quiet crisis surrounds us. It is now or never to snap out of the male coma of inaction. The male coma of inaction. I think this economic slump has been going on for a long time in Japan anyway. It was already happening before the birth rates dropped. Um, I mean, if we look at the data and so once again, you can see it's starting to slow down in the 80s, 90s and 2000s even. Uh, in fact, if we look at the lost decades of Japan, I think since the early 90s they've had a recession. Yeah, and I'm not going to go into everything on this piece, but the Wikipedia article here, it's talking about the economic stagnation caused by asset price bubbles in yeah, 1991. And that lost decade was originally 91 to 01. But then, of course, we've had the the 08 crash and other things. So it's actually called the lost 30 years. They've got anemic growth. I mean, the, the uh, GDP growth was only one around 1.1% 1 .1 annually from 91 to 2003, which is well below industrialized nations. And yet when you think of the technological ad advances in Japan, and they make a lot of those cons consumer electronics and other things that we all use. Um, that's worrisome. Here's another piece as well from Slate. Herbivore's Dilemma. Okay, so this is feeding into that birth rate, I feel. Japan panicking at the rise of grass-eating men who shun relations, don't spend money, and like taking walks. Ryoma Igarashi likes going for long drives around the mountains, taking photographs of Buddhist temples and exploring old neighborhoods. Sounds like my kind of guy. He's just taken up gardening, growing radishes in a planter in his apartment. Until recently, Igarashi, a 27-year-old Japanese television presenter, he presents on TV. He's a prominent fellow. He would have been considered effeminate, even gay. Japanese men have long been expected to live like characters on Mad Men, chasing secretaries, drinking with the boys, and splurging on watches, golf, and new cars. Today he has a new identity and plenty of company among young Japanese men as one of the Sushoku Danshi, literally translated grass-eating boys, named for their lack of interest in relations and their pre preference for quieter, less competitive lives. Japan's herbivores are provoking a national debate about how the country's economic stagnation since the early 90s has altered men's behaviour. Newspapers, magazines and television shows are newly fixated on the herbivores. Have men gotten weaker? was one theme of a recent TV talk show. Herbivores aren't so bad is the title of a regular column on the Japanese website MB Online. In this age of bromance and metrosexuals, what's why all the fuss? The short answer is that grass-eating men are alarming because they are the nexus between two of the biggest challenges facing Japanese society, the declining birth rate and anemic consumption. Yeah, so they're not consuming goods and services, which is bad for the economy, and then no one's having kids, so there's not going to be anybody to consume those services moving forward. There's going to be nobody to rent your apartments, condos, and other things. No, you're going to have loads of empty properties and no one to rent them. And the social services bill as well, the pensions and things like that. Who's going to be paying the taxes to fund the welfare state? Or whatever the equivalent is out there. Herbivores represent an unspoken rebellion against many of the masculine materialist values associated with the Jap Japan's 1980s bubble economy. Media Shakers, a consulting company that is a subsidiary of Dentsu, the country's largest advertising agency, estimates that 60% of men in their early 20s and at least 42% of men aged 23 to 24, excuse me, 23 to 34, consider themselves grass-eating men. That's alarming. That's 60% in their early 20s. 60%. And no, they don't ask them what the reasons are for why they're doing this. They don't confront them and say, well, not confront them, but query them, quiz them on why they're doing it. They don't come to, you know, any YouTube channels or things like this. They don't say why are they are doing it. It's like, they just point the finger and say it's their fault for all these problems. 42% between 23 and 34, again, you know, it's just as alarming if you're the, uh, the ruling class. Partner Agent, a Japanese dating agency, found in a survey that 61% of unmarried men in their 30s identified themselves as herbivores. Of the 1,000 single men in their 20s and 30s polled by LifeNet, a Japanese life insurance company, 75% described themselves as grass-eating men. I, I had no idea it was this big. Japanese companies are worried that herbivorous boys aren't the status-conscious consumers their parents once were. 
They love to putter around the house. According to Media Shaker's research, they are more likely to want to spend time by themselves or with close friends, more likely to shop for things to decorate their homes, and more likely to buy little luxuries than big ticket items. They prefer vacationing in Japan to venturing abroad. They're often close to their mothers and have female friends, but they're in no rush to get married themselves, according to Maki Fukasawa, the Japanese editor and columnist who coined the term in NB Online in 2006. So again, there's a lot of similarities of the herbivores to the lone wolf ideology, or the, the not the ideology, but the movement, the philosophy, the lifestyle. Not completely aligned, but very, very similar. Grass-eating boys' commitment phobia is not the only thing that's worrying Japanese women. Unlike earlier generations of Japanese men, they prefer not to make the first move. They like to split the bill, and they're not particularly motivated by bedroom fun. I spent the night at one guy's house, and nothing happened. We just went to sleep, moaned one incredulous woman on a TV program devoted to herbivores. It's like something's mi missing with them, said Yoko Yatsu, a 34-year-old housewife, in an interview. If they were more normal, they'd be more interested in women. They'd at least want to talk to women. Now they're complaining. Now they're complaining. And again, this is spilling through into the West, right? More and more people in the West, like us, are, are following the, these sorts of ideas and integrating them into our lives. Nobody can make us do anything. It's up to us. It's pure freedom. You know, I'm sure if you made it more attractive to get married, settle down and have children and propagate the species and keep that birth rate up, uh, men would do it. They would do it. But I imagine there's a whole convergence of factors there that are underpinning this. Shigeru Sakai of Media Shakers suggests that grass-eating men don't pursue women because they are bad at ex expressing themselves. He attributes their poor communication skills to the fact that many grew up without siblings in households where both parents worked. Because they had TVs, stereos and game consoles in their bedrooms, it became more common for them to shut themselves in their rooms when they got home and communicate less with their families, which left them with poor communication skills, he wrote in an email. Okay, I'm not going to read the rest of that article. I'll include it in the description box. But you can see that the birth rate in Japan, if we just look at comparatively, the birth rate in Japan, 2018, so I imagine this is fairly outdated, 1.4 births per woman. By comparison, the United States, 1.7. We look at the UK here. UK birth rate, 1.7. And we know, I mean, if the birth rate's less than two, you know that half the population, if your birth rate is one, that means that with the previous generation moving on, your population is going to halve. And like I said, there's nobody there to fuel that growth, pay the taxes, keep the welfare state going, and rent the houses. There's just going to be loads of empty empty warehouses and empty businesses and, and uh, you know condos and things like that. So it's a real challenge. But again, if you made it attractive to date, if you stopped berating men in the press and instead tried to understand some of these factors that are underpinning this problem, we could actually get forward and move somewhere. But no, that's not happening. And men are actually saying, you know what, I really don't care. I'm going to look after myself and do what I want and have that self-determination and freedom and autonomy over my own life. And I guess the reason I covered this today is because I, I definitely see this happening in the West. I, I see it moving into the West because the birth rate, let's look at the other countries in the West like uh, Canada birth rate. Yeah, 1.5. And again, that's fueling the immigration surge as well. So that's why there's a lot of immigration being sought into the West because nobody's having children. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that analysis, guys. I'd like to hear your thoughts and perspectives down below. Thanks again for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.